What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh-huh. Rebel Radio is going down. What did you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. My guest today is none other than Esprit Devora. She's the founder of We Are LA Tech which uh, creates exclusive experiences for the tech community and shares job opportunities and really is really building community for tech professionals here in LA. Really cool stuff that she's got to share with us. Um, This woman is on some wild adventures from landing herself in the hospital, from working too hard to traveling all over the world. She's gonna tell us how she's building a business that really means everything to her. And when I say everything, you'll see what I mean. Um, And some great lessons about how she's becoming a better leader. And I hope you dig this interview with Esprit Devora. So where have you been? I know you've been on the road. I went to 15 countries. Oh my God. And then Malibu and Austin. (laughs) And then uh, we're gonna go check out my apartment on the way back and see See the destruction. (laughs) <laughs> so, and what prompted this trip? Why, um, why, why were you? I was, I was actually really sick from burnout. Uh-huh. I feel like we're already in the interview. I was like sick from burnout. Yeah, we just kind of started and yeah. then it all comes but, together uh, later. Yeah, James I was... fixes everything in Oh, post I have a is... mat that fixes everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, no, I know. Was, I was, I burnt out super hardcore and the right side of my body gave out for five months and I was in severe pain. No, and so... In, I think it was September of 2016, I um, saw a hit list special to Norway. And okay. I was like, I refuse to be like in this amount of pain past November, which is when the flight was. So I Wait, just what's a hit it. list? Hit list, the yeah. last minute flight specials. No, I don't know yeah. about it. Yeah, it was amazing. So it popped really? up on my phone. Yeah. And so I booked it to Norway, never been to Scandinavia. Wow. And then um, worked my butt off to not be in pain and then it was the day before I went on my flight that I felt some ease so it was five straight months of severe pain she saw me and she felt so bad for me wow she said she thinks it's all stress that that special hit list thing that was going to be 12 days Uh oh okay that's true it was supposed to be 12 days and then I was like I was just gonna stay nice (laughs) four months later yeah yeah so okay we got to learn how how we got so burned out yeah, sure. Um, I, I I mean, you know me from my Facebooks. So I'm so open and transparent. I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. So yeah. I'm 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 interested to learn. But you know, I've been excited to talk to you ever since we met. I know. Didn't didn't we have a tweet combo while I was gone yes. too? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you're like, no, it has to be in person. Yeah. And I was like, no, but I really want to do your show. Exactly. <laughs> So I'm glad you're like... Yeah, it's just more fun this way. No, this is way... No, I do the mom person too, so I understand. But I just like nice. didn't... I was really excited. I like yeah. didn't want to wait. Yeah. So, okay. Let's... I, I got to talk about what you do because you're, yeah. you're a speaker, blogger. Yeah. You have events. You're the girl who gets it done. <laughs> um, you, you've got... Uh, it feels like you have a million businesses. Yeah, I know. That's a branding problem. Uh- okay. <laughs> We'll get to that. Yeah. So I want to know, and maybe it's good we have mom here. Yeah. But um, or bad, depending on how you look at it. Well, <laughs> well we got we, we got some of those questions too. <laughs> but I'm curious, like, um, I'm just curious, you know, what kind of, like, how do you get to be you, right? Shit. And so, so <laughs> let's talk about what kind of kid you yeah, are. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, I I believe that music is a big part of how we define ourselves yeah so what was your first music that you that I remember yeah I mean the first music that had a huge impact in my life was actually Weezer okay for two reasons one strangely enough and this is a total coincidence my mom performed with Weezer in what was it Africa or something so oh she wow had told me about this cool band Weezer and then uh, there was a Weezer concert. I was like, oh, that's that band, you know? And it was the first time I crowd surfed, which is why. Okay. So it was like this weird, I was like, I can't believe my mom actually like did something with Weezer and now I'm sure. crowd surfing. And, and then I crowd surfed a lot after that. So I don't remember what music I liked. Uh-huh. I mean, I think I liked a lot of oldies because my parents would take me on these like road trips to like Vegas or something. And yeah. they always would play like, do you remember Earth 101? 
Yeah, yeah, Care. Yeah. yeah. So they always play. So I think yeah. I really liked oldies okay. until I discovered Weezer. Okay. <laughs> And now I like uh, my mom hates the music I like. We were listening to it, which on is the like way here. like it was like, you know, the Justin Bieber remix. With, oh uh, wow! What is it with uh, Skrillex? And, okay. And like you know, like not EDM, but yeah, like, I hate that too. Yeah, <laughs> but like that kind of uh, no, you love EDM. I I, I love all a lot <laughs> lots of different. But kinds it's of like music. that kind of like house. I like yeah. house and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mainly, I like a lot of different music. Mainly that. I right. have to say, I'm a bit nervous. My mom's sitting here. Is that right? Yeah, but yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Like so there's she, another. She's chill. There's another cool thing about my mom being here. It's the first time she's ever seen me do anything professionally. Really? Yeah. I. Nice. Yeah, but because I was she like, wouldn't let me. No, I don't. No, that's true. Oh yeah, yeah I it's would true. Make her nervous. Like I'm nervous. Right Nothing now. to be nervous. But about. you're among friends. I'm. I'm amiss this like time in my life where i like value hanging out with my mom yeah. more than anything else so i'm like sure. okay if i'm gonna go do this thing it doesn't mean you have to like go away so. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no that's yeah. great i think that's, that's one of the things you learn like being gone like you know what's really important we're gonna to make them. every guest bring their mom from now on <laughs> that's a requirement yeah um okay so that's the music so and but now you you work in technology. Yeah. With we are LA Tech. We yeah. see you on the shirt. Yeah. Um, oh, I brought you guys stick. Where did I put them? I put them somewhere. And no, not in my pocket. I'll find them. I okay. Brought you and James a sticker. Very cool. Yeah. So I'm excited to learn about that. But how did you first um, get interested in technology? Oh, my father. My yeah. dad was an early adopter before so, I knew what the term early adopter was, and so um, so you know he'd have all the like gadgets and stuff around me and at a home office and I would play on his computer and I just loved it and I just it was this natural you know was there a certain was there a certain technology that like that really did it for me yeah. probably like the online chat rooms okay <laughs> I mean if you count that as tech but like I would just play on my dad's computer and find these like I was on prodigy and uh -huh. stuff. So I would like play on the chat rooms yeah I, I'm surprised I'm actually starting to learn python today oh, really? the programming language but i'm surprised i didn't become a developer because it would have been an easy segue for me yeah. but instead of um like taking that route i went more of the project management like how to connect people mm -hmm. online just what i you know went from the yeah. community chat room and prodigy to connecting all of fucking los angeles That's hilarious. <laughs> but uh but i i could have easily seen if my dad just opened like one more screen where I would have to code. Uh -huh. like I learned how to code in HTML on MySpace. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think yeah, we sure. all did. Make the cherries <laughs> yeah. rain down yeah. from the top of the screen. <laughs> um, so when did when did that become a career interest? Um, I think, so I say this all the time, but when I was like four or five years old, I'd walk into Westwood Village with my dad. We'd go watch movies all the time. And yeah. there'd be these vacant office buildings. And I would just daydream about what... I don't even think you've ever heard this before. But like there'd be these um, these vacant office buildings and I'd picture what kind of businesses to put in them. Oh, and, yeah? Uh, what'd, you, what, what'd you have in mind? Like I would watch cartoons and stuff like then. So I would picture like t-shirt companies and okay. I would put like the... Um, you know different characters on the t-shirt things but then how i would sell it was a really bizarre kid and i just remember these vacant office buildings that i would always day daydream about and then uh as i got older i my interests were already technology because i was already on the computer and it was travel and it was action sports my dad mm. would take me to like monster truck kind of events and i'd go to the skateboarding competitions no and i loved all that stuff yeah. so i was like i know what if i connect everyone to travel, do action sports on the computer together, and you know, and so sure. I created the first action sports social network. Oh really? Um, yeah, wow. it got hacked. What was it called? It, it was Zex Sports. Okay. And it got hacked, and uh, it was before Fuel came out with anything. When yeah. Fuel, do you remember Fuel? TV? Yeah, yeah, sure. When Fuel came out with a uh, Fuel was a property of a Fox, and when right. it came out um, with its action sports social ne network, I thought. I remember crying. I was like, oh, my God, I'll never stand a chance anymore. And sorry, Fuel, but they did a really sucky job. So I still, like, survived past Fuel's, like, okay. network. But, like, um, when my site got hacked, I was like, well, what do I do from here? And I had this advisor. His name was Farley Kayan. And he uh, said, well, you have to be, like, the CNN of action sports. You have to be mm -hmm. everywhere. So I took my high school journalism background, leveraged every single credit card to my parents' dismay, <laughs> <laughs> and and created an action sports media company. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's and cool. it was really, really exciting and lasted a long time. And it was absolute 
misery and heartbreak when I didn't realize the vision that I had for it. Yeah. So what happened? Why, why did So my investors say it was just a time. But okay. um, I don't believe in that. I, I really believe in accountability and that uh, we're, we're, we can all succeed, period. Right? And I think I wasn't sure. a strong enough leader. And I think I ne- needed to go through a lot more learning experiences to learn how to be a stronger leader. One thing that I did really poorly is I believed in having a democratic company mm. where all my staff would like contribute in making decisions. And isn't this like so kumbaya and lovely? But what happened was is they wanted someone to make a choice. Whether it was right, right or wrong, they just wanted a decision maker. And I didn't understand that then. So there were so many things in that uh, catered to me being a poor leader that I wasn't aware of. And I think me not being the leader that I could have been at the time is is what created the downfall i didn't have a strong enough company culture in the sense like um i learned this actually from tony shave zappos like mm-hmm. if you have if you say our team delivers everything on time then if somebody doesn't deliver something on time well that doesn't fall within your your right. culture code and they have to be let go but i was too emotionally invested into everybody that worked for me so i would let them get away with things then one person would see that someone else got away with something and then they'd be like oh well then I don't have to do that something well anymore and it was just the downfall of the team because they didn't have a strong leader. everything I think went back to not having a strong leader my investors again say it was the time I think it was my poor leadership skills yeah yeah interesting and what, what, what killed me then is I believed with all my heart and soul bank account like every single ounce of my being that I would be I would make this company the Google of action like I had zero doubt in my mind that really jolts you in creating future companies because when you see you could believe in everything and do the secret and have your affirmations every day and and then you don't achieve that mm-hmm. like vision that you have then um <clears throat> you uh you fall apart like moving forward because you're like oh wait i could do absolutely everything and i could still completely fall 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 flat on my face sure. so you have to like move forward with an acceptance of that and so now as you mentioned for a second like i run we are la tech if we are la tech would to you know not work out in an hour from now tomorrow like it's separate from my personal identity now i have myself now whereas then all i had was my company so when i lost my company i felt like who am i mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what i like to eat anymore now it's like this is something I'm really proud of. I actually think I've already succeeded because I've already created a positive impact yeah. for thousands of people. And now it's just about can I bring in the resources to continue to support this endeavor moving forward? If I can't, okay. it can't move forward. If I can, then it can move forward. And it's very simple. And of course, there's emotional connection behind it, but not the same way I had it with my sports company. Sure. I never, ever want to be that personally invested into something again where I just simply can't survive without its, its existence. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, but, you know, I think you, you're touching on a lot of interesting things, and, and I think a lot of people would simply just take the investor's word for it. Yeah. That the timing I was remember bad. I crying. And kinda... I was, like, arguing with them. I was like, they're like, it's not your fault. I'm like, but it is. I'm like, you guys don't see it. Like, you know, like, yeah. it was really nice of them to be so supportive of me. But, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that I, I mean, I, I feel like that's a, obviously failure is a big theme that we talk about in yeah. business, right? Yeah. And especially in the tech world. And I think there's, um, I don't know, I, so I've, I sometimes feel like there's too much acceptance of failure. Yeah. Um, because, you know, there's a real cost to people's lives. Right. And, and you know, it's an upheaval. Um, maybe in the past there's been not enough. And so we're, we're kind of finding the right balance. Right. Well, my definition of failure has changed. So back then, failure to me was um, not coming close to IPO or not being on the cover of Fast Company magazine or, you know, at not making revenue, whatever it was. It was very um, status driven. My my definition of success today is do you do I take action every day? Do I take steps forward? Because I can't possibly know which step is right or wrong, which is super frustrating but I have to find some kind of zen in being at peace with that because I'm not psychic. I mean, maybe right. the psychics out there can figure out, but I can't. And so um, it's really about am I taking a step forward every okay. single day in some way that I'm bettering myself as a person in my personal life, as a business person, as a friend, as a yeah. family member. And the days that I don't t- take steps forward are the days that I, or hours that I become really frustrated with myself. Yeah. So how did um, you bounce back? 
from that first From experience. my sports yeah. company? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because you mean, have all this perspective on it now a, and yeah. all this wisdom. So in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm still bouncing back. I'm still learning. I feel that my sports company defined who I am as a business person, defined who I am as an entrepreneur. I just I, – I feel like I'll be – kind of bouncing back from that life experience my whole life okay. in, a, in a beautiful way. Yeah. The way I got out of um, the sadness, that I think was just a matter of time. Um, so anything you did or any anyone you sort of really leaned on for that? I was really sad. Yeah. Um, there were just so many... Okay, this is totally not direct answer, but this is really interesting and really vulnerable and may even make me look bad, but I don't care. One of the hardest things to get over was the jealousy and resentment I had toward my team who I funded and supported to achieve their dreams, actually achieving their dreams. Sure. And me not. Yeah. Now, I I would never take that away from them. Like, I still love them like family. So I'm happy that they achieved. But I was like, why not me too? And so it created, I don't know if resentment's the right word, because I I didn't, I wanted them to have that, but Mm -hmm. I wanted the me too. Yeah. And um, I felt like a lot of anger. And that was the hardest thing to process. The hardest. Because I'm talking about, like, I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, like, and my time. And all, as as a business leader, the type of business leader that I am is very supportive of my team. Like, the first thing I find out when you work with, with me is, like, what are your dreams? Because I want you to achieve them. And I want to support you in that journey. Because I'm so grateful in you supporting me in mine. Mm-hmm. And so that I stayed true to that. A hundred thousand. 10%. And then I didn't realize my own dreams. I was just like angry. And so, and then angry, like, you know, bubbles up in you. And then Facebook was like a killer because you'd see them win things and right. do things and achieve things. And you're like, why not me? Like, and we so just full of anger. And I think that that anger creates like sickness over time and everything else. And so that was one of the hardest things to get past. But I don't know where I saw this, but I read this somewhere way long after. And it said um, something about, like, how blessed we are to be able to even have the talent to help others realize their dreams okay. or the ability. And I was like, whoa, wait, I have this gift that I'm able to e- mm. that I was even able to do that in the first place. And I started to very slowly focus on the gratitude that I even had that ability to help others. And I know that sounds so cheesy, but I needed, and, and then I, I thought of these, I, can, I don't know if I have them memorized anymore, but at the time, oh, I remember what it was. It was this hairstylist that I'd met in the action sports industry. Okay. And I, I was really, really bummed. I wish I could think of his name right now. I'll like look him up and like send it to you. It was so long ago. And he told me four philosophies Let's see if I, and I wrote them in my bathroom mirror, but remember, I haven't been home in months, so I haven't seen them in a long time. Okay. But I, at this time, when I was at my lowest point, I started repeating them every day. And, um, and my, I was really sad. And I remember, and I'm not just saying this again because my mom's sitting in the studio with us. I remember thinking how sad I was and how I'd already done so much I wanted to do and I didn't have, like, any why to like move forward because mm-hmm. I'd already like done like I, I felt really defeated I was thinking I don't want like I don't want my mom to lose who I am mm-hmm. like it was real weird and so it was between that thought and then repeating these four things and if I remember what they were one was um we had we all have a choice to look at things in a positive or negative like and then I, I remember telling him well what if I get into like you know what if my car breaks down how's that you sure. know positive yeah. he's like it, it's a choice you look at it and you at least you have a car or whatever you know and i'm like oh and then uh, another one was um live for life experiences mm. um oh god i wish i could remember them right now anyway again i could send that's them very to you, good but, yeah but like it was um i just started repeating those to myself every day and thinking about like how like i wanted to be present for my mom and but man losing a company is like well, losing a company you love that deeply and you're that, you're, again, like my personal identity was like integrated into my brand. So I really didn't have myself. Sure. So when I lost my company, I lost my whole being. And um, my friend Ken Feldman was like really supportive at the time. And I it was just a really dark place. 
Tim Ferriss created a video about it mm. um, at the time, and it was a, like, ha- and that's when I became aware of like what was happening with me because I didn't understand. I knew that my company wasn't working, but I didn't understand why, like. Right. my mental processes and he was saying we become so integrated in our brands like we lose ourselves and and i'm like yeah that and it was it was a really long slow painful <laughs> journey yeah yeah so that's why i think anybody starting a business today including myself and the things i tell myself is really just take take focus on taking steps forward and don't worry about like where you'll end up or having a road map okay. people go like where do you see your company in five years i'm like i don't care i just want to smile today like yeah. You know, I'm not worried about five years. I'm not worried about next year. I'm not worried about about next month or even tomorrow. It's like, am I smiling today? Because if I'm not smiling today, something needs to be done. So that's when when I hit burnout, I was like, oh, hell no. You know, and book that ticket to Norway and just explore. And I was terrified. I was like, what if I lose We Are LA Tech because no one respects me for traveling? But I'm like, I'm like in utter pain. Like, this is my life. Like, I'm miserable like and and i need to do something about it so even if we are like tech fades because people don't you know understand why i have to do this for myself then let it be because my health and my well-being is way more important than any any company totally but i didn't want to lose my company i'm really proud of what i built and i'm happy that everybody was so they were they celebrated me Mm -hmm. adventuring and and it worked out but i was definitely afraid of that at the time so um so why did you, so, so you made it through that with some scars, yeah. obviously. Um, and by the way, I would do it all over again. Okay. Exactly. I mean, as painful as it was, I would do that life experience times infinity. It was that magnificent. Mm. Like, how much I love my team with my sports company, how exciting it was to invent things out of my imagination and make them reality i remember i was in my apartment and i got offered i was deep in in debt with all my credit cards at this point and i got offered a personal assistant job for seventy thousand dollars and i was like this could start to be like a pathway to like dig myself out of this yeah and my girlfriend masha in new york said there's this conference called ad tech and it's like really cool and since i'm so nerdy i'm like ad tech Awesome. I want to go to that. I didn't even know what it was. Uh And uh, it was between taking this job or taking a chance going to some random tech conference in New York on like miles or whatever. And uh, and there's this um, this action sports award show for stoked mentoring at the Mm -hmm. time. I don't know if you've heard of. Yeah. 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 So um, stoked mentoring empowers like uh, kids to become stronger adults and through action sports. And so Masha's like, maybe we could go to this action sports event. And I, so I call them up. I'm like, hey, can I, you know, be press at this event? Which, by the way, is where I ended up meeting my investors. So I didn't take the oh, job, no. flew yeah. to New York, went to ad tech, which I loved, st- like a crazy advertising conference that I don't even think is cool anymore. But like yeah, at the not, time, it was awesome. I've been. It's oh, yeah, cool. right. Yeah. But it used to be cool. I'm sure. Or it was. Maybe just because it was novel for me. And then I went to this sports award show was in the VIP room, met my, unknowingly met my future investors. They were like, what are your dreams? And I was like, just telling them my dreams. And they're like, we need, we need to connect further. And I remember Masha had set up a meeting with me with someone from, I think it was uh, the Hockey League, Mm -hmm. NHL or something like that. I don't remember why. And I was like, oh, I can't. I have this other meeting. They're like, no, we have to meet. We have to meet. We have to meet. And finally, I I took this meeting with these guys and, um, they're like, we want to invest in you. I was like, are you sure about that? Like, do you, you know I don't make money, right? Like, yeah. and they're like, yeah, like, uh, we're sure. Like, you have, for these particular reasons, we want to up our digital game, et cetera, so forth. And and they became my investors. And uh, it was amazing. I mean, they, they weren't the only investors I met with at the time. Sure. I should tell you my Sequoia story. Okay. But, like, but, I mean, taking that chance, not taking the job, and getting on a plane deep in debt. That's amazing. I mean that's crazy. So what did that do? What did that do to you? I mean, obviously getting investors facilitates the company. Right. But internally, what did that do to you? So at the time, so it didn't do much at the time. And here's why, and here's like the things that I learned from. It didn't do much at the time because I was going so fast. Like every single time I would say, What's next? What's yeah. next? What's next? And I would yeah. never stop and just be celebrate. And that's why it's really, I now, I, I 
do my best to put myself in check to constantly celebrate mm -hmm. because I just never, I remember like signing the contracts for my investment and it was like, what's next? What's next? What's next? It was Masha who was like, hello, you right. just raised money. Like, yeah. this is a big deal. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got it. Da, 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 da. And so now like, I want to stop and be like, you know, like, I built a mobile app for the city of Los Angeles. That's awesome, you know, and like even little things or sure. I went on a run this morning. That's all, whatever, you know, just yeah. constantly like celebrating um, because I just never did, never. My whole entire sports company, not once did I celebrate any of my achievements. And there were so many epic achievements. I mean, I think I was the first female to raise money in the action sports industry for anything online. Mm. That's nuts. I mean, I've never... Like, hey, I'm, yeah, hey. first social network for the action <clears throat> sports industry. Yeah. Nuts. Like, these aren't things that I even appreciated until forever later. Yeah. Um, so, is it, do you have to check yourself? Before I wreck myself. <laughs> <laughs> After. Um, yeah, from, from, from getting too personally attached to your business so not anymore not anymore so the the experience was so traumatic yeah if i could use that word traumatic but rewarding at exactly the same time which is a very confusing emotion okay uh but it was so deep that um i never want to nor will i ever feel the same about a company again not in a negative way just a healthy balance of this is my personal life and this is me outside of any status, any business, any piece of pre anything. And then here's the company and here's my why for having the company with like we are LA tech, which may transform into being like we are tech, whatever, you know. But right now I focus on Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm just like really proud of the impact I make. And I think that's great and cool. But like again, if the resources don't match up, like that it's not for lack of me giving it my all. Okay. And, and that's a like a personal thing where I'm like, to talk in third person for a moment, like, Esprit, I'm really proud that you've given it your all, yeah. you know? And like, let it just do what it it's meant to do. Like I've, I've literally given it my, every day I give it my all. I mean, sometimes too much to the point that I hit burnout, which is not okay with me, you know? So it's like, it's just about, and finding that balance of what giving my all is because burnout is not acceptable and not okay. And I think that in the startup culture, we really reward working too much and never sure. eating and like all this Absolutely. stuff. And it's just not, that's just not a way to live. Sure. I don't even think Richard Branson lives that way. He always celebrates no. being physically active and being a good husband. And the, I, these are reasons why I think like he's a super rad entrepreneur because he, he seems from perception at least to find that balance mm -hmm. and um, whatever balance means to us in this world. Yeah. But Balance is definitely not burnout. Yeah. Totally. Okay, so why did you start We Are LA Tech? So I started because of my sports company. So in growing my sports company, I felt, I feel that I had everything I possibly needed to succeed except the right support system, meaning like mentor figures. Um, okay. You know, I would go to these panels and conferences like just so deserving of that golden nugget of knowledge and i didn't learn till years later that these people speaking really only cared about gaining clients they didn't totally. care about yeah, yeah, supporting me yes and so it, wait maybe we should explain what 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 is we are la tech do oh sure so we are la tech i've been working you guys on my like tagline or yeah. whatever okay. but i've been thinking about a lot while i was traveling so essentially we are la tech creates offline experiences to accelerate relationship building amongst the tech influencers in Los Angeles. Okay. And then we have the podcast. What kind of offline experience? So like skydiving, horseback riding. Oh, wow. Um, tomorrow we have an escape room. Um, okay. Like I think beginning of next week we have a sale, a, a sunset sale in South Bay. So why that? And so, I mean, a lot of people doing in similar businesses are producing talks. Yeah. Right? They're producing mini conferences or, totally. or whatever. So why do it? the way you're doing it. So I, I love small, intimate situations where, like, you really get to know someone, you let your guard down. Part of the problem with networking events is that you, at least in the startup culture, is that um, 
we all feel like we have to be perfect. Perfect for the investor we meet, perfect for the potential co-founder, perfect for whoever, perfect for hiring the engineer. We're not perfect. We're human. And I really make it my um, agenda to push myself as much as possible to be as vulnerable as I can be at all times. Mm -hmm. Specifically because, you know, I was in that perfect place too with my sports company and it didn't bode well for me because yeah. I couldn't get the support that I needed because I was too busy trying to be so on you know, seemingly everything's all right. So um, I wanted to create an environment where people feel safe letting their guard down and supporting one another. And so we have a really strict culture code about collaboration and about empowering one another and about communication. And I'm really proud of it. And then I create the podcast too. And the yeah. podcast is about like connecting people to everyone as well. So everything's about connecting to add value to one another's lives. And mm -hmm. so um, when I have, you know, a great startup on the show, then all these people are able to know about this startup that they wouldn't have known before. And startups have raised money because of the show. Mm -hmm. They've, you know, they've met investors. They've met their co-founders. And um, the other day, this girl told me that she met her boyfriend. Oh, <laughs> wow. Like, what? That's yeah. so cool, you know? And so everything I do at the core is about creating mutually beneficial relationships, whether it be a podcast, the offline experience club, or like the mobile app that I built the city the mobile app shows you all the events going on in LA, not just oh, LA wow. tech events. It's yeah. every single community organizer's events. Crazy. And so that's about, again, meeting people, connecting with one What's another. What's the app called? We are LA tech. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, oh, got it. Yeah. And the reason why I'm kind of playing around with expanding to like, we are tech is because, you know, I, I also produce and host and do these like cool experiences for women in tech. And so it's not like just LA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm working through that like business brand development and, Sure. Yeah. But yeah, my I, you brought this up like right when I sat down, which was like, oh, you do so many things. I'm like, ah, that's a branding problem because really what I do is so focused. Yeah. Like it's so focused on essentially uniting tech people in tech in specific categories. Right. But for whatever reason, my online-ness like shows me everywhere. So I'm working on that in 2017. <laughs> so um, there's a thread running through here, which is these subcultures. Right. Whether it's sneakers action sports yeah tech you know i think uh we, we wouldn't have called tech a subculture i think maybe until recently yeah um, i think i think uh, I mean, it's always been an industry few, yeah right but the way now that it's, it's like permeated culture the new new absolutely yeah. so what is it in you that is drawn to these subcultures so when i a big thing that i did wrong in um, my sports company was I tried to cater to wakeboarding, skateboarding, motocross, snowboarding, surfing, like all of them. Right. That was really dumb, um, at least for for my life experience. That was really dumb. And the reason why it was dumb is we feel emotionally connected to each vertical. Right. And so even if you skate and you ride, you, if, you, if you're a snowboarder, you're either looking at skate or you're looking at snow. You're not like yeah. trying to do both at one time. And so that's why when I started We Are LA Tech, LA is really important to me. Or mm -hmm. like women is really important. I focus on verticals and yeah. then I grow from there. And um, because then you can be emotionally connected. Like I feel proud wearing a We Are LA Tech shirt as do like a lot of the people in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But if I had a We Are Tech shirt, yeah, some people may like it. Maybe I could be, but you don't feel that emotional connection. Sure. It's the LA part that you're like, yeah, you know? And so... Um, that's what I focus on now because I didn't do that well with my, see, everything leads back to my sports company. <laughs> it like just constantly like plays a role in my life. But yeah, I think it was, um, really silly. And it, I, I believe my business partner at the time said, you know, we should really focus on one and grow from there. I'm like, no, we got to do it all. Well, it's interesting you say that though, because like, you know, Fuel TV, for example, is similar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It covers all action sports. I did work, my agency, we did work for Blue Flame TV. Right which was the precursor to Fuel, um, <laughs> and, you know, CJ's an old friend. But, um, uh, and, you know, X Games. Yeah. Right? So I think there's a business reason right. why, you know, wakeboarding on its own isn't big enough, but right. if you if you wrap your arms around all these right. things, right, that there's enough critical mass. Totally, but being a startup, you need to start somewhere yeah. and build. Um, there's a marketer named, he has a tech company now, thank goodness, because I don't really care for marketers, but named Clay Collins. Okay. And I used to say that. I was like, well, if I don't focus, like, how how will I attract everyone? He's like, when you 
form a, an emotional connection with a small enough audience, they'll tell their friends, and eventually you can grow, and nobody's going to be upset. But if yeah. you start too large, you have, you don't have that entry point. <clears throat> so it's about building that core foundation and then growing up on top of that rather than just trying to be everything everything to everyone. Why do you not care for marketers? I think most of them are, like, full of shit. Like, you can't, you don't teach, like, you don't teach how to, how, you don't sell how to market. Like, you don't even have a pro. Like, I have way more respect for, you know, Clay now that he's built, like, lead pages or, like, or like Dropbox or, yeah. you know, having a, a thing. Sure. It's funny to say tangible when it's a tech thing, but, like, a product. on, Like, having info, pro I don't know. I think just think. Some people, like I'm, I, I think I meant I just started studying, I'm starting to study Python today. Uh -huh. Like that kind of education, like I want to like learn how to learn how to do that. So that I don't really consider like info product, even though it is, it's mm -hmm. like an educational product, right. but like a product, on, I don't know. I just, it's so icky and it's a lot of nepotism involved. Like, how do you mean? Like a lot of marketers lean on other marketers to sell the right. one another's lists, sure. and then and they usually and here's the part that I don't like. Listen, if they were really like gung ho on making sure every last person, or at least a large percentage, took action and like really achieved the results that they wanted in purchasing that, I wouldn't have a problem. You you said you you're you know you've been thinking about kind of branding and yeah. And how, so how are you? How are you gonna solve that? You know, I don't know. I, I, um, there's a couple things I have in mind. Uh, I don't know if you know Mark Hemian with Design Inc. Mm -hmm. He has a company where you get access to like the most incredible like UI, you know, user interface designers around the world, and you can get them at an affordable rate to like critique you or guide you and stuff like that. So I've been thinking about signing up for Design Inc. and finding someone to like give me feedback on how to put it together. Okay. There's another firm in New York that offered, I met them in Austin that offered to like take a look at everything. But I think I think We Are Tech is going to be like, a, I don't know about branding, it's just gonna be like, kind of like putting everything together. I think I have everything too segmented right now. For instance, I mean this is getting a little bit too much into it, but the club is separate than the online chat mm. within We Are Late Tech which is separate from the mobile app, which is everything's separate. Even though for me, they're all one, right. like how I market them publicly, they're all separate, but they're not really. So I need to, kind of, I'm not an actual programmer. I just hack uh -huh. my way around yeah. the, the internet. Sure. So like I need to figure out how to make it like, how I need <clears throat> to find how my website can tell a story. And I don't effectively do that right now. Okay. The reason why I don't do that is because I believe the most important thing for my website is actually not people coming there every day. I could care less whether they can go wherever they want of my properties. Like that I want to create relationships. So when they mm -hmm. enter an email address, when they visit my website, that's the most meaningful thing that could happen because now I could create a relationship with you and really add value to your life. But like, so I'm afraid of changing it because like I don't want anything to be detracted from creating that relationship. And so... I don't know. I haven't. I, I'm gonna figure it out. Okay. Test a lot of things and see sure. what works and see what doesn't. Yeah. <clears throat> so I know part of that is is you're a big outsourcer. Yeah. Uh, you seem to be an expert in in productivity. I do know and, a lot about outsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I outsource my love life too. I want to talk about that. I know we have mom here. Who, <laughs> she loves sure. that I outsource my love life. So I I saw the site, the blog. So. T what does that mean? <laughs> Tell us about that. Uh. So okay. I it was thought. I thought first, of it first I want to know why yeah and then how so I thought of it because of Tim Ferriss okay did you, he outsourced Tim Ferriss is yes. the author of four hour work week um he's written he has a book called something Titans uh, tools of Titans. tools of Titans, yeah where yeah. he interviews I think billionaires or something um great author he did he's a guy that does a lot of experiments so he outsourced his love life hired a bunch of like firms like India Australia like all around the world gave him gave them his online profiles they set up a bunch of dates for him at a coffee place he met his girlfriend i was like that looks fun so i literally just like kind of like replicated that okay. on a smaller scale i had bobby ann in new york okay. log in to all my profiles and literally just set me up on dates and i loved it and i did meet awesome people from it and some you know eccentric people yeah <laughs> um but it was great there's a great moth talk i saw it yeah i saw it, uh, I saw it in hollywood I'm sure it's online as well. 
some guy that tried to like hack his dating life yeah in that way and he and so he was trying to optimize the perfect profile yeah for for the dating totally. sites and then he got to a point where he was having like three dates a day like coffee yeah and like just trying to yeah. sort of perfect the thing and then he realized that it was he was overthinking it oh yeah so i've done three dating experiments wow. all related to outsourcing one i outsourced bobby ann the, uh-huh. and she didn't pretend to be me or anything yeah she was my assistant she's like i think my boss would be great with you <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah. Reese, shout out to Reese. It was my favorite. He took our first date. He took me on a horseback ride. Okay. Come on. Amazing. Right? All right. Okay. So then uh, I outsourced my love life to a Facebook ad, which is really interesting because you can pick all the criteria you like want. Like a personal ad on Facebook. Yeah. Like it yeah. went to my outsourcing website uh-huh. and then guys had to like, a, I don't know about apply or email yeah. to go out with me. That was super fun. I, th- I feel like that, um, that, Self-selects a certain kind of guy. <laughs> I think I get a lot of intrigued people. Like, who is I'm, this girl? I'm sure. And then uh, the last one, which was really interesting, uh, was I um, outsourced my love life to dating apps. So what I did is I did dating apps for, I did 10 dates in seven days, all via dating Dating apps, apps are like Tinder or like chemistry.com? It was, um, it was let's see, it was Bumble, Tinder, okay. Hinge. Okay. All of those. Um, yeah. So it was 10 dates in seven days. The last guy, we had a blast, and that worked out for a little while. Yeah. Nice. Um, is, that a, is that a good idea? Would you recommend that? It's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, you know, I recommend inventing your life and exploring okay. and not living life by the rules. I don't do anything in an orthodox way. And so... And a lot of people, when I, I've been doing these different experiments, I guess kind of assume I just want to, like, husband up. And I actually am not in the place in my life where I want to get married. Mm-hmm. And so I'm literally just off for the adventure on these, like, social experiments or life experiments and just to kind of see where they take me. Yeah. Do you remember the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Yeah. Yeah. So I sure. feel like I'm choosing my own adventure every day. And I'm, like, picking, like, which ending I want or something, you know? And uh, it's fun. And uh Yeah, so it's not about finding a husband right away or, like, needing a boyfriend overnight or any of that. It's literally just about going on this life adventure and seeing where it takes me. And maybe it takes me nowhere. Maybe it takes me somewhere. It doesn't matter. It's just about the excitement of exploring it. So the thing that stands out to me about all of that is that um, it sounds like a lot of work. And I don't mean to say that that's not a negative. But what I mean is, like, I think there's a certain type of person that's just wants things to be on autopilot. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because I, I don't <laughs> I get that all, from you. I think we all do. Okay. I think you I, you you feel like the opposite end of that spectrum. I mean, like, I don't know. I when you first said it seems like a lot of work, I was processing like, is it a lot of work? I it doesn't feel like a lot of work to me. Okay. It feels, it feels like creative exploration. Um. That's probably an important distinction. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I the more I can get on autopilot, the more I could creatively explore, explore other places. Sure. So it's not about, like, doing nothing with my time. It's right. about being able to have as much time as possible to be creative. Yeah. Um, so give us yeah. some, some secrets to outsourcing or, to, sure. or, or productivity And I got to make general. sure to tell you the Sequoia story because it's okay. always a fan favorite. But... Uh, So outsourcing. Um, One is I view all my outsourced contractors as my teammates, and I respect and value them as human beings. I think that's a big mistake. People just think, oh, I could get this for $5, and they don't have regard for the person. That's like a human at the other end, you know, no matter where they live in the world. Um, I think being really clear with instruction, there's a a Mac program called Tapes. Mm. There's also a, um, it's for screencasts, um, also a program called um, uh, Snag It. And so making a video instruction to complement a a written instruction is really important. I think a lot of people go wrong with outsourcing because they're not sending instructions well. I think um, having test projects at the beginning to find the right contractor, so hiring um, at just on a project basis, you know, five people at a time, you pay them Mm -hmm. each a project fee. It could be something as low as like 15 bucks, but then you test them out and see who performs the best and hire the person that essentially wins your contest. You know, market is a contest, but you tell them, we're going to see how it works out. Um, I go a lot in instinct. Um, If I'm looking for someone to do phone work, 
I'll have a bunch of people just call into a voicemail and leave a message and see who has the best phone and then interview the ones that make that cut. Yeah. Uh, like Google Voice. They'll call into Google Voice and leave a message. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, instructions is the biggest thing. And not trusting someone abroad, that's weird. Mm. Like a lot of yeah. people are scared to trust abroad. Sure. Like, yeah, just as much as like scared to trust someone next to you. Like, you know, it's like that's neither here nor there. Like I, I've never had a security issue. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about Sequoia. So everybody loves the Sequoia thing. So it's about, again, inventing your reality. So yeah. I was building my sports company. and So Sequoia, if anyone doesn't know, is a big venture capital yeah. firm. Yeah, right? it's one of the biggest Leaders, in the world. Yeah. yeah, I did not know what venture capital was at the okay. time. But I read this article on um, how YouTube um, sold to Google and they were backed by Sequoia. Right. I'm like, they don't make money. Who are these Sequoia people? Uh -huh. So I go on the Sequoia website and I read the bios of everyone and, and I see who they're involved in. I remember at the time it was like Cafe Press and different companies that I thought were really cool at the time. And um, I was like, well, I want to be in that club. And so I start emailing everybody on the website like, hey, I'm flying to San Francisco. Like, can I, you know, can I get together? And I, and I only wrote the people that I felt like I resonated with. And okay. no one wrote me back. Yeah. And I changed my, it said how to do a business card and how to do a business plan. So I changed my whole business plan and business card to match their whole website. Mm -hmm. I got on the plane and flew to San Francisco regardless. With no meeting. No meeting. Yeah. No one returned anything of mine. And I borrowed my friend Grant's car and I drive to Silicon Valley out of San Francisco. And I walk into Sequoia. And I remember sitting in my car and my business partner who lived in Minnesota was like, I called him up. I was like, what am I doing? I'm out of my mind. I was like sweating in my car, like totally like I'm, I'm crazy. Like I'm a crazy person. You don't seem like you get nervous <laughs> with this kind of thing. Come on, I've been nervous the whole time. My mom's here. I must hide it well. You hide it very well. <laughs> so like, so I'm like sitting in the car sweating. I'm like, I'm like, Spencer, I can't do this. He's like, you got to do this for us all. Like, Spencer's <laughs> way more concerned. He has, like, two kids and, like, a house in okay. Minnesota. I've always been the risk taker. He's like, you got to do this. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I get the, the nerve to, like, get out of the car, walk in, <laughs> and the reception goes, receptionist goes, like, hello. And I'm like, and I asked for someone. There was this name resonating in my head off of these bios that I read. Uh -huh. And so I asked for this person. And she goes, is he expecting you? I'm like, well, I sent the email. Yeah. And he comes out and he meets with me. Nice. And he was like, he and he was really cool. And he said something like, like, good thing you had the courage to come in or something like that. Before I even got back to my friend Grant's house, he had already looked for my email introduced me to who was become my future mentor thought I was like great stayed in touch and like and and it's just about and I remember getting on the plane after that trip and these people go like sitting next to me go how are you able to meet with Sequoia you like right. need a meeting or you need to know someone da, da, da. Yeah. I was like you know just decided <laughs> or whatever and and our, my, my girlfriend at the time was getting her MBA she's like you know like that's like meeting with like Michael Jordan, right? And I'm like, no, I still didn't understand the gravity of all I knew is these like magical people who like helped YouTube get sold to Google. And I was uh -huh. like, I want to be in that club. And I think it was a huge lesson to myself that like literally like consistently invent my own reality that anything is possible. And if we don't at least like take a chance, take a step forward, like this week, I saw on a Facebook ad Visa's doing some competition okay. to like uh, to like fund you know startups. I applied. I don't know if they'll ever see it, but if I don't at least try, then I'll never have a chance. Mm -hmm. At least I could try. You know, at least I take the step forward and see what happens. And sometimes it's nothing at all. And sometimes Sequoia takes a meeting with me and introduces me to some of the most influential people. That following couple months spencer my business partner from minneapolis flew into san francisco we pitched 30 investors because i had met with oh, sequoia wow. yeah. like in end i went with um the investor i met in new york because uh -huh. um they owned a large action sports distribution uh, film distribution company and okay. it was so it was most in alignment with what i needed but i met with 30 investors like that was crazy i remember That's amazing. A side note, so like the night before I was meeting with these investors, I had their names and pictures and I wanted to 
like I wanted to be boss in the meeting and my mom's a memory expert. So I called mom, do you remember this? I called my mom on the Of course she remembers she's a memory expert. <laughs> yeah, good point. So I called my mom on the phone, like, Mom, I need you to help me memorize every single person's name and what firm they're with because I wanna be like on point tomorrow. So she stayed up with me that yeah. night memorizing all these names i walked in and i was like mike hey how's did it up for him going da, da, da. they're like what this girl's like where did she come from okay. and those investors all remember me when i run into them years later i'm sure yeah so yeah. just anything's okay. possible since mom's here yeah we have a memory expert in the house i think She's a memory motivator I okay yeah Oh, I, I think we could do a whole separate show about <laughs> what it's like growing up with mom who's oh, yeah. expert in this field but give us one tip for uh, having an amazing memory. Oh, okay. Oh. Come here, Mom. No, I'm good. No, but the mic. Oh. The mic. <laughs> or you can tell us something yeah. you've learned. Yeah. Either, either way. I mean, I... I, well, I just want to say this, though. There's a difference between being an expert and a memory motivator. Okay. My daughter... Come here. Nobody can me. hear you because okay, you got to get close to the mic. Okay. My daughter often introduces me as my mother, the forgetterer. <laughs> <laughs> now, she'll say she... <laughs> She only remembers when she's getting paid. <laughs> Give her a couple of bucks, maybe she'll remember. <laughs> but I do want to tell you this. A memory expert really tries to memorize everything. Right. A memory motivator tells you how to hit the save key mm. on your memory. Okay. Now, I know your name is Josh only because when Esprit was telling me, oh, he, with the music and everything, I was interested. So... What I had to do, this is a quick, this is a quickie. You have to, if you're a memory motivator, you're telling people, remember, you're not memorizing everything, you're just telling right. other people how to do it. Yeah. Okay. If I want to remember your name, Josh, it's not enough for me to just say, Josh, 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 Josh. I have to collect your name. That means I'm interested in that information. Mm -hmm. So first I collect, your name is Josh. Then you have to connect it to something you already know. Okay. Okay, I know an old boyfriend named Josh. So right away, you and my old boyfriend. Sure. Were <laughs> okay. Hopefully if he you, was an all right guy. <laughs> if you do that, oh, Give yeah. my name a bad Yeah, because I don't want to fool around. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but the thing is, so you have to collect it. Then you connect it to, what does that make me think of? Just yeah. that one line. Sure. What does that make me think of? That's the save key. What does that make me think of? If you don't do that, even if I say Josh, 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 a million times, I have within seven seconds I could not remember your name is Josh. Mm -hmm. So then if you, if you uh, collect it, name is Josh, his name is James, I collected his name too for James because I was curious. Then you connect it. I'm not telling James what I connected it to because next time he'll be calling me. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can recollect it. Okay. Now, if you don't do that, what does that make me think of? What, what does that make me think of? If you don't do that, you haven't hit the save key. Right. So that's the main thing that people don't do. They, that's great. They don't hit the save key. You could, you know, like, I could be in a room for the whole day with you, and the carpet could be green. And we come out of the room, and the spree could say, do you remember what color is No, I don't know. Because I never connect. You sure. have this thing that you say. What is it? Uh, the the brain. Um, we we don't know how to use the uh, the computer attached to our, our neck. Oh, What's yeah. that I thing say, you say? Yeah, the best computer in the world is the one that's attached to your neck. But yeah. you have to know how to hit the save key. Sure. Yeah. I like yeah. I like that so saying. That's a good one. But yeah, like you know, being able, people love to hear their own names. You know, and people love when uh you keep the focus on them so when i was able to go into that room with yeah. all those investors and know them by their name and photos having never met them before That's it creates an impression and so that was big I love oh it. my gosh and after i almost passed out literally i was so speaking of nervous i remember this it was insane i like the second I was done pitching, I, I practically, I felt like I was going to throw up. I had to go outside. I was so faint. I was wow. like, it was, <laughs> and I hadn't slept in days. I was so, yeah, it was a great light. See, this is why my sports company, like it will never be something of my past because it. it makes sure. everything I am today. Okay. Well, I want to get to kind of a speed round, but I, I, um, 
Do you know how excited I am to be on your show right now? I love it. This is awesome. <laughs> like, this is so cool. You guys, this is like, I wish you could be here. Well, I guess you can in the video. Like, That's right. It's uh, it's this really cool space. It's got has a, like a really quiet sound, but it feels a lot of warm energy in here. And uh, and it's just like, it's really, really exciting to be sitting here. We're excited to have yeah. you. So I, I want to, you know, you're the girl who gets it done. <laughs> um. And you seem like you're telling these stories and you are just all in yeah. on everything. Right? Yeah, I am all in on everything. And, and so um, how have you learned, how, how are you going to protect yourself? Right, because... So there's a, couple, there's a couple things that I tell like new entrepreneurs when they say, what, what should I do? What should I know? One, there's two things. One, I don't do well, which is interesting. So you've said the tagline, the girl who gets it done, right? Yeah. Which is great because it's memorable, but there's something really bad about it too. I think that when you create a line that you want people to remember, have it be something that they can purchase. Like if you're a web developer, okay. I build websites, you know why nobody really knows. Like this is why it's like, wait, what do you do? Because my tagline is very ambiguous. She gets things done. Yeah, Everybody remembers no, it, it yeah. but they don't know what to hire me for, right? Or they don't know exactly what I do. Okay. So I think there's a pro and con. I intentionally. I actually have a different issue. Oh, with tell it. me. Um, because I, I get your point, but I also think like sometimes the tagline doesn't. Sometimes it only needs to be memorable, right? Or distinct. Or distinct. Like or, just do it, Nike. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like like they can serve different purposes. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to lead to closing a deal immediately. Yeah. Um, although I see the value in that yeah. too, but but I think where I see it. And, and just hearing you tell your stories is that it's adding pressure to you to get things done, right? Because you create this. Interesting. Um, you set this really high bar for yourself. Yeah. And then you constantly have to live up to that. Oh, that's interesting. So I don't feel any pressure. So what it means to me is that I'm, well, how it started, which is actually an interesting story. I'll make it as short as possible. I was in Austin, South by Southwest. Tony Shea with Zappos would have this delivering happiness bus. Yep. And there were these, actually, he's told the story publicly, so I could say who now. I, I'm very careful to like not uh, reveal people's identities that sure. are, are uh, have celebrity status, but he did tell it publicly. So it was um, Ev Williams and Ashton Kutcher and like, and, and Tony Shea and like their entourage. We were in this bus and we needed to find, um, for whatever reason, Ashton Kutcher couldn't get us into the club, all these people. And so He's I, fired. <laughs> I, it was very bizarre. What good is he? If He's he can't like, get he you was like such club. a sweet guy, but I was like, I don't know. So I look at, at Tony's teammate. I'm like, do you want my help? Like, I don't know how I could right. even help. Yeah. But I was like, do you want my help? And she's yeah. like, oh, that'd be great. We had seven minutes for some reason before the bus had to park. Like, I just remember, like, I had seven minutes to make something I'm in. So I just get on my phone, start texting, calling. And I get all of us in with security detail See? for free, no cost, into the best place in Austin, like, in seven minutes. And yeah. people go, who are you? Are you their publicist? Are you, you know, like, the, and the girl who gets somebody it done. goes, she's just the girl that gets it done. Like, you know, and then, so that's, like, where it came from. But what I love about it is that um, it really defines me. Like, I always find a, cre it's back to creativity. Yeah. I always find a creative way to solve problems. Like, I don't even see problems as problems. I see them as challenges or like what are the solutions behind something. Yeah. Like everything has a solution attached. It's just about discovering it. And sometimes there's multiple solutions and sometimes there's just a singular solution. And so I'm constantly like seeking out solutions. And that's what getting it done means to me is okay. like whatever it is, let me just creatively find the solution for it. Yeah. But the piece of um, advice I usually give to people before starting to answer your other question was you should have a support group in place. Being an entrepreneur, as glorious as it may seem from the newspapers and magazines and TV shows, it is gut-wrenching. Mm. And you want to have a mom that, like, won't judge you when you go into his, well, maybe she'll judge me a little bit going to a zillion dollars in debt on my credit cards, but she still loves me, you know, sure. and she's still supportive. Yeah. And, like, and like great friends that, like, if you lost everything, you could crash on their couch and... Something not attached to any ego. Yeah. Because being an entrepreneur is just just such a difficult life journey. And unless you really 
like it's just in your blood like it is for me to be an entrepreneur. I just I don't like necessarily recommend it. It's not something where it's like a mm-hmm. quick fix or yeah. And then uh, for whatever reason in our startup culture, it's like the job has become the bad guy, which I don't know why that is. Like the nine to five is like, oh, stay away from the nine to five. I have a girlfriend who works for Disney and absolutely loves her job. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think I think it's about being in alignment with what you feel fulfilled by yeah. and doing that. And so if you're living a life that you don't feel joy in, that's the problem. You don't have to go be an entrepreneur to find joy. You know, it's I, actually probably the last place to find joy. Possibly, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I learned that years ago. We have a very, our company is very entrepreneurial and we have a very sort of free form uh, structure. I think there's a lot of emphasis on culture, but very little on, on, on like process for the sake of process. Right. Um, and what I found, it took me a while to learn that that wasn't going to work for everybody. That some people appreciated knowing that they had to be there at 9 a.m. Yeah. And knowing that, like, there were just these certain rules totally. that they could live within. And other and then so I had to come to a point where I realized, that's great. Those people shouldn't work here. Yeah. And they should go somewhere else and be really happy with whatever they need. Yeah. And then I should find the people that want what I have to offer. That kind of culture. Yeah. I think the life phase that I'm in right now is... <clears throat> understanding that I have the power to design my life. And in a lot of ways, I've already been living. But I I understand it now, like, to 100. Like, even, like, I don't like my bed at home. But I felt like I purchased one of the best beds at the time. Okay. And then I've just accepted. memory foam? Yeah. Oh, I hated stu- that. I hate, I we hate it. We had one for, like, three years. It took it's us to awful. Get it. It but terrible. because, like, I invested so much into, like, purchasing. Get a Casper. They used to advertise with us. Totally. They don't anymore. But we can still get you fifty dollars off. Amazing! <laughs> I've actually looked at Casper, but like it's something as simple as that. Sure great. Like if I don't like the bed, get rid of the bed. Yeah. Like I just I'm starting to understand so much more that it's every aspect of my life. It's not just my entrepreneurial living. It's everything that I literally can just redesign it to what feels right for me at whatever stage I'm in and. That's been that's something I'm coming into now that I feel really powerful about. Um, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's exciting to think how I eat, how I live day to day, what time I wake up, um, what bed I sleep in, um, what kind of friends I'm surrounded by, what kind of social life I want, um, what I want my travel schedule to be. Everything is all up to me to design. And uh, it's great. I think I think that we feel at least I did. I felt confined. Like oh, I have a company. My company is about L.A., therefore I cannot leave. And so I didn't. And so I got really sick, you know? Yeah. And and then I left. I broke out of that mold thanks to thanks to my body protecting me. And, and I saw that, oh, I can travel and have a company and my company can be based about L.A. Yeah. and it will be okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's so, crazy. So, okay, my last question before we get to our speed round is yeah. – um, so you just have come off this amazing bit of travel. Yeah. Um, what tools enabled you to do that and, and be productive? Yeah. And still have a company. An amazing team. Yeah. An amazing team. Um, I have to continuously train myself how to be a better manager and things of that nature. It's not easy, but having an amazing team is just like, it's vital. Uh, we use Basecamp for project management. Um, uh, Wi-Fi was always really frustrating while traveling, I'm so that's sure. some things I'm still working on. Totally. Skype. Um, but really, it's about having a team yeah. that, and Dropbox, but it's about having a team that really cares about what they're producing. Their reason for being there is not about a dollar or is not about um, just to have a job, but mm-hmm. they're, they have their own why of why they want to be involved, and it's their driver in producing great work. And they feel gratitude and joy in being a part of this particular team. That's great. And, and um, you know, hearing you talk, and I know you do a lot of work yeah. in, with women in the tech space. Yeah. Um, and I, I had Shira Lazar on recently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've seen her since she created a name for herself. Sure. Love Shira. She's such a hustler. <laughs> so she said, in some ways, a lot of things similar to you that, I, I think she was very critical of her um, ability as a leader. You're right. 
which I feel like I'm proud of her. She took steps from going from hosting events. Sorry yeah. to cut you off. No, to go no. From hosting events and like being a moderator, she was like the tech host. Like if you had a tech event, she was the MC. Yeah. To building her own company. Absolutely. And a great company. Yeah. No, I love what she was doing. Um, but but she, you know, she was very conscious of of her gaps. Yeah. Right. And I think one of those was her decisiveness as a leader, right. very similar yeah. to what you described. Um, is it, it, it feels to me more, uh, that more women are, I don't think that women are necessarily less decisive than men. I think that women are maybe more aware of that gap in their skill sets than, right. than men typically are. So there was a, a study done of the way, typically, a way a guy sees a situation and a, a female sees a situation. Typically, if a, let's take like a fighter pilot or something, right? You're both, or a pilot, you're both offered a job as a pilot. The guy will say, and both don't know anything about being a pilot, the guy will be like, yep, I'll take it, and yeah. then have the confidence or craziness to figure it say pretty much I'll figure style. it out yeah. maybe not with with fighter pilots yeah but, that that kind of concept yeah yes a woman will be like let me learn how to do that and then take the opportunity it's like yeah. our natural way of um sure. interacting with the world and i think the more women become aware that that's just kind of something that like we're born with in how we view the world our perception then we can make a choice and be like oh no let's just say yes to and and make and what we will have the competence to figure it out nice um but that's the core difference between the two is um how we interact with new opportunities interesting okay so um let's go back to your 18 year old self yeah and give her which one is only piece last of year yeah of course um i'm sure it's fresh in your mind. yeah my 18 year old self well Far and wide, my intuition is my oracle. Um, I think I didn't understand just how competent I was because mm -hmm. I gave a number too much credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, to create my own story and follow and, and write my own journey and not to worry about what the next guy is doing, not to try to be Richard Branson or try to be Tim Ferriss or try to be any of the other entrepreneurs in the world, but just write my own page. Okay, that's great. Um, I think you probably answered this already, but we're going to ask it anyway. Yeah. Uh, what's something you used to believe and then later decided you'd been wrong? What the definition of success is. Um, the, as I mentioned, the definition of success to me now is taking action mm -hmm. and uh, taking steps forward, where the definition of success before had some sort of like ego attached or social status attached. What talent? Or financial, yeah. Sure. What talent have you always wished you had more of? Oh, man. Uh, I'd say, like, numbers. Like, I wish I was, like, a math whiz in the sense, like, I wish I just knew numbers quickly. I wish I could be in a pitch meeting and do a financial forecast off the top of my head. And, yeah, numbers. Okay. Yeah. Um, wh what other career would you choose if you knew you couldn't fail? A hundred thousand percent, I would be an author. I would write books. What's the first book going to be? I, mean, I was thinking that as a time. One, one title I thought of is From Startup to Start Over. Okay. Um, it's a good I one. Know. I've been thinking about I've been thinking about this for a long time. Yeah. 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 I, w I would read that. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so if I worked for you, uh, what's something I would hear you say over and over? I'm so grateful for you. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Probably to the point where you'd be annoyed. <laughs> okay. There's other the worst things to be annoyed with. Um, so uh, what's your favorite city you've ever visited? Oh, that's tough. I'm sure it is after coming off all this travel. I mean, I don't have a favorite. I have like a lot. And what I learned. Give us a couple. What I learned, though, in this, in this trip is it's about the people. Yeah. It's about connecting with people more than it is about the city. So, like, I went to this epic castle in, outside Bratislava, and um, I remember that I told someone else to go there, and they were, like, they told, came back and said they didn't have a good time, and I remember the people I was with. And so it's always about the people. I'd say I was really impressed with Malmo in Sweden because mm. they have the most incredible park. Like, nice. I would, I, the park felt like a fairy tale wonderland. I want to go back there. Um, I loved um, Lake Bled. 
Uh, there's just, there's so many, like, there's a few cities that aren't my faves, like, not a big fan of Brussels, sorry, okay. but I yeah. love Belgium mm. in general. Like, I've been to so many different places in Belgium. It's one of my favorite. I can't wait to go back, but Brussels, not a big fan. Okay. I used to live in Paris, and I don't like Paris anymore. I feel like it's changed a lot. It feels very hectic to me. Yeah. I, I tend to, like, lean towards small towns. Which is not Los Angeles. <laughs> not so much. But uh, but yeah, we, like, we have a we have a bit of a small town. We have a, we feel like a lot of small yeah, towns. Yeah, yeah. So like Santa Monica Especially is if you like a town to Europe, itself. We are, yeah, you know, it's just like a bunch of cities. Yeah, come together. Totally. Yeah. But uh, I mean, just it's about the people, though. I like when I travel, I stay at hostels. I don't stay at hotels, and oh, I'd wow. prefer even if I had like a million zillion dollars, I'd still stay at hostels because you get to meet the people yeah. and connect with the community and interesting. It's just rad. Yeah. To me, people, when you're backpacking, you have this mentality that you're on the street and everybody is your almost friend. And you could talk to any stranger and they will support you in your life journey. It's like the most unreal feeling. And for whatever reason, when at least for me, when I'm at home, it feels like a lot more rigid, like you can't just talk to the person over there. And I remember the one time I, I pushed myself, I had just gotten back from a trip. There were these girls sitting at the Santa Monica beach on the grass and they had their yoga mats and they looked like so so much fun. And I was like, I bet I'd love being friends with those girls. And I was like, you know, if I was traveling, I would just talk to them. So I yeah. pushed myself and I yeah. talked to them. And one of the girls, Jen, who has a blog called Toast Meets Jam, she ended up becoming a great friend of mine. No way. And if I hadn't done that, sure. I would have never met that person. So the mentality of a traveler and a backpacker is so much more freeing and has, there's so much, if this is even a term, like you embrace the world, yeah. whereas when you're at home, you feel rigid for some reason. I don't know why that is. So I love the fact that you just walk up to people or that you <laughs> walk into office buildings where you're not invited or whatever, yeah. right? Like, and, you know, there's, I do a little bit of that, not to that extent. Yeah. But what I've found in my life, uh, I'm, I'm trying to teach my son this, I have a seven year old, oh. is that. When you don't do those things, you regret them for a long time. Yeah. Do you find that? Yeah. What is that quote? You The only missed you miss, opportunity. You, 100, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, I think about, like, this is, you know, I grew up in San Francisco taking the city bus everywhere. And yeah. And you would, like, meet girls on the bus. Yeah. And then sometimes you'd be, like, intimidated and you wouldn't talk. And I can still remember the girls that I didn't speak to. Yeah. I don't remember the ones who like just blew me off. Or right, whatever. right, right. But the times that I was too afraid, like, yeah. you know, it's been a long time and I can still remember that. Um, or, or, you know, there's other things too. But, um, okay. Not sneakers. Do you collect anything? Are you a collector? I collect shot glasses when I travel. You do? And cool. my most expensive collection <laughs> Is my insane kitchen gadget collection. Oh, really? I collect kitchen gadgets. What's a highlight of the oh kitchen my God. gadget collection? They're all my... Yeah? It's like Toys R Us for cooking. Is it a particular style? or is So, it like, just... let's say I'm having a bad day. Yeah. I go to TJ Maxx in Santa Monica because they rotate their kitchen gadget, like, aisle every week. Okay. And look for new kitchen gadgets. It's, like, my favorite. I have every... I have, like... A, and I, I collect I would not them have guessed to use them. You. Yeah. yeah, I don't, like, yeah, yeah, just okay. want... Yeah. But I even, before I went on my recent travels, I even bought a new, like, shelf just for, to display my kitchen gadgets. I'm so proud so, of So, like, them. what's on the shelf? Give so, me something. So, like, um, there's this thing. I got it on Kickstarter, which makes... Oh, what's it called? Uh, it's, like, this Indian... Food, uh, do dosa. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know what a dosa was, but it looked epic. And so I got a dosa maker. Okay. Um, uh, now do you make dosa? Now I make dosa. And a uh, food processor. My mom actually dosa. bought me a food processor as a gift. And bad. then um, I yeah. have a like a Vitamix blender. And I have like um, the thing where you like turn it into a lime and you squeeze fresh lime uh -huh. juice. And I have, oh my God, there's so many. There's nice. just like, I, I mean, I have from the Omega juicer to the to the hand machine juicer, to the one where you crank down, uh -huh. like, <laughs> like I just, I, oh, spiralizer, like, uh, where, no where you, like, it. take, you could take a zucchini and oh, make a yeah, zucchini yeah. noodles. Wow. Um, so there's a lot of late night TV shopping. Oh, no. Like, seeing those gadgets. So, no, however, sometimes when my mom's watching TV, she'll, like, see something, she'll yeah. call me up, do you want this thing? 
Like, yeah, I love kitchen. That's like, amazing. love kitchen. I okay. even bought a kitchen gadget on my travels. I was passing in Barcelona. Yeah. One of these vendors. It was so funny. And I got a walnut cracker. Oh, wow. I was so excited. All right. <laughs> They're like, how are you buy- Are you going to hold this in your backpack the whole time? I'm like, Interesting. Must have my walnut cracker. <laughs> what book has had the biggest impact on you? The Alchemist. If you if you believe in something with all your heart and soul and you have good intention behind it, the whole world will conspire to make your dreams reality. Love it. Um, what movie have you seen the most in your life? Heather's. Oh wow. And Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> They're probably equal. Okay. Maybe Heather's a little bit more. I love Heather's. Oh my god. And duh, pump up the volume. <laughs> oh no way. Wait, hold on. All three Christian Slater yeah, movies. Yeah, that's and Pump the Volume is a great, so, but it's, a, Pump it's an underrated movie. Yeah, and I think it kind of like aided in me becoming a podcaster. <laughs> is that right? Remember it was like, yeah, he had pirate, his like pirate, pirate radio. radio. But um, sure. I love Pump of the Volume so much that I recorded it, the audio of it, and would listen to the movie. No way. So if that counts, it's, I think massive. it's probably a pretty close tie between Heather's and Pump of the Volume. I've never heard anyone mention just <laughs> playing back the audio from a movie. I love that. I, lo- I loved that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I could, at one point, I could recite the whole movie. Wow. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, favorite DJ or musician you've ever seen live? Oh. Oh, man. Okay. I really, so I'm not a Coachella person. I only went once, and I, that's where I discovered Gogo Badello, the band. Yeah. That was pretty, that was pretty amazing. Uh, DJ. I'd say um, I really like Steve Aoki. Like, I watched his documentary, Steve and Dim Mock. Yeah. Steve Aoki, just as a <clears throat> business person and a creative, totally. is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for doing this. Is this going to be it? I'm already sad. Uh, we'll is come it back. Over now? Oh my they, gosh. This the is The problem is so they cool. kick us out of here after a while. Oh, shoot. So we're going to lose the room. <laughs> But no, come back. Let's talk. Uh, this is like. I'm, I have a feeling we've only scratched the surface. Josh. Of your great story. I'm so grateful. I actually totally mean that, but it sounds so sassy after what I said before. But I'm so grateful for this. <laughs> See, this is what would get I so annoying. I think you annoying. just say that to like, everybody. I just feel like, you know, you're blessed with these opportunities in life. And if you don't appreciate them right when they're in front of you, they're just fleeting moments. No, yeah. I'm totally appreciative of you coming. I, I, uh, I Actually, now I remember how we met at, at LA Podcast Festival. And then I watched you moderate a panel and you totally brought life to this like a badass dark, moderator yeah right? yeah seriously remember what i said before is that when i was growing my sports company like i got unfortunately to realize that most people are just speaking to gain clients yeah. and it and i will and i make and sure to make it we a saw point. some of that yeah. on your panel and i think you handled it really well what, what was that i, I don't want to say on the, okay on, on the air but uh, <laughs> but uh but yeah a really couple panels sad. were not playing nice with each other oh yeah, yeah. i'm sure yeah but I know how to so tame them. <laughs> I guess. Well, cool. Thank nice. you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for letting my mom join us. Oh, mom, that was great. That did was you awesome. have a good time? Oh, Mom's welcome back anytime. <laughs> um, so how does everyone find? Oh, yeah. Huh, let's, that too. Let's promote all that. Um, so I love Twitter. So tweet at me, at Esprit Devorah. You could always shoot me an email if you feel more comfortable. So it's Esprit, E-S-P-R-E-E, at we are la tech.com that's w e a r e l a t e c h.com uh, a big you know reason and my drive and why i would be on you know any show or any talk i give is i truly 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 like find so much rewarding value in connecting with you and being supportive of your journey and so definitely feel free to email tweet i my personal accounts on instagram i don't really do anything business wise there yeah nice linkedin whatever you guys want just say hello like i welcome you to say hello yeah nice that's it that's all we got i hope you loved it i know i did the spree killed it for us like i'm sure she always does uh let us know what you think hit us up with a review on itunes find us on twitter facebook youtube wherever you want it's rebel radio net peace